Welcome to Reviews That Scare with Jess and Blair. I'm Jess. I'm Blair. Blair, how are you? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I am doing very well. It uh, is officially the second week of October, a.k.a. the greatest month of the year, a.k.a. Universal Monster Movie Month. Mm -hmm. And we have a classic to talk about today. But before we do that, what do you say we chat a little bit about some horror news? Blairski, want to kick this one off? Yeah, just a couple of things. First one is more of a personal thing. We got our official tickets to Dedmonton. Yes, we did. Dedmonton Haunted House. We are going next weekend, Saturday. I cannot freaking wait for it. It's going to be great. We've been waiting uh, <laughs> since last year. Um, we are going twice, but this, yeah, next Saturday will be our first time. And I am so stoked. Yeah, we're going once for regular, you know, just the regular event, uh, which is next weekend. And then, yeah, as we said in an earlier episode, we are doing the Lights Out event in the beginning of November. Yeah, I am excited for, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I think it's very important that we do it while it's, while we, while we can see kind of what's going on. So we know what we're getting ourselves into, you know? Absolutely. But also <laughs> it's like the more, the more opportunities we get to do uh, haunted houses in the month of October, the better. The better. <laughs> I'll do them every day of the week. Every day of the week, <laughs> please. Said, man. Yeah. Um, my last piece of horror news is uh, we just saw The Exorcist Believer in theaters. Mm -hmm. um, we did do a review on that, so check it out. But I want to just say they had two trailers at the beginning of that movie, I want to talk about the first one is finally the full first official trailer of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. which looked so good. Yeah. It just looks incredible because before that, like even the trailer before Saw 10, it was just the teaser. Yeah. Right. For Thanksgiving. So they finally have a full trailer out for Thanksgiving. So check that out if you haven't seen it. It looks amazing. It looks and great. This, you get a really good glimpse of the of the killer. Uh, you do. And he looks a pilgrim. awesome. Yeah, yeah he looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I expect that just to be a lot of fun. That movie. Yeah. Just to well, 100 percent. A lot of fun. The second one I want to talk about is that movie. Um, I think it was called Swim Night or Night Swim. Night Swim, I think. Night Swim. Uh, what did you think about that trailer? Uh, we immediately turned to each other and we were coming up with suggestions on how the whole situation could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it, it'll be it'll be all right. I'm sure I'll watch it. I don't know if I'll see it in theaters. I believe that one is James Wan, no? It's James Wan and Blumhouse. Yeah, uh, which so I, I'm sure it's going to be... These days. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be good and uh good and scary and full of full of jump scares uh yeah a lot of jump scares right <laughs> as was the trailer it it seemed like the the concept of the idea seemed very ridiculous very the, confusing to me man yeah the trailer was far too long um <laughs> it was just an extended game of marco polo without uh the Forever. polo being being Respond. said yeah, yeah or, or yeah. her ever opening her eyes it was just um, a lot of marco marco <laughs> the reason i brought it up in horror news is just because i it, it's a movie that just sprung up i had yeah. never even heard of it before no neither have i no so definitely if you haven't seen it already check out that you could probably google night swim i think it's called night swim now, <laughs> there is another teaser trailer that you have not mentioned and i'm actually surprised that you have not mentioned it are you okay? What are we talking? Well, uh, I'll maybe start this off because you might have a little bit more info, but there, uh, we had talked in the past that they are putting Terrifier 2 into oh. theater. <laughs> That's right. Yes. They are putting Terrifier 2 back into theaters beginning in November and exclusively just on those showings, there will be a two minute trailer for Terrifier 3. Being and shown. apparently it's after the end credits. I'm not sure when it is. I'm yeah. I, that I don't know. I don't know when it is, but uh, Terrifier three is coming. Yeah, I think I'll maybe wait until that one is uh, pirated <laughs> onto YouTube. 
Okay, well, like, hey, so Jesse, you were a fan of Terrifier One. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, you do. You are not a fan of Terrifier Two. I just, it was so long, and uh, well, they have just reported that Terrifier far Three too long. will be three hours, stop, and forty-two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. I, I hope they shorten it. I do hope they shorten <laughs> it. I did find Terrifier Two uh, too long as well, but I, I, I enjoy. It. I, I love the Terrifier movies. I, I love just you. a good, a good just slash fest you, know? you just love you so art the clown <laughs> yeah i do <laughs> oh goodness uh anything else for horror news that's all i've got brother i've got a few here like you were saying we just saw the exorcist believer uh and good news for them on the preview thursday night they brought in 2.85 million dollars on surprised. the thursday night no. uh pretty good the first film in the new david gordon green trilogy officially came out this past friday october 7th and it's expected to bring in a massive 20 to 30 million dollars opening weekend. Yeah, I'm sure uh, they did. I haven't looked, but I'm sure they did. It's a lot of money, but then you think about it. I looked up some numbers here. Universal is hoping Believer pays off as they spent 30 million dollars to make it. Ah shit. Um, okay. Not only that, they apparently spent 400 million dollars to acquire the rights for The Exorcist. Who had the rights for The Exorcist? That I don't know. Okay. I um, don't either. <laughs> that's a lot of money, though. That's yeah, a that's lot a of money. lot of money, man. Um, but it is a trilogy. So, like we said, I'm sure they're hoping that it'll pay off. I'm sure it will. I don't know yeah. if it'll... I don't know if it'll bring them in uh, $400 million. <laughs> it's but, a lot of uh, fucking money, man. Shoot for the stars, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I have some more really cool Exorcist news, uh, this time regarding the original... 1973 film some never be so, uh, before seen footage has turned up and it is excellent um the footage is a makeup test for the demon pazuzu played okay. by uh elaine dietz yeah yeah um, the clip i saw was maybe only 20 seconds but it was fantastic and so incredibly terrifying um the clip was released by director paul davis on his Twitter page, I believe it was on his Twitter page. Okay. And he promised that he would be releasing 10 more minutes of unseen outtakes, plus the full two minute makeup test over Halloween. So something really exciting to look forward to regarding 1973's The Exorcist. I can't wait. I wonder how long it took to apply that makeup. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, but and it's like we don't really get a a, a great glimpse of it. In no, it's always so quick. <laughs> Let me tell you, go out and watch this makeup test because it yeah, is. Okay. She's just making a whole bunch of different faces while ma wearing this makeup. It's excellent. Okay. All right, it's so right, yeah. cool. Yeah, that's all I have for horror news. What do you say we dive right into this week's episode? The second episode of Universal Monster Movie Month goes to 1931's. Frankenstein. Runtime for this one, one hour, 10 minutes. Blairski, what do you think? <laughs> I said this in our last episode on Creature from the Black Lagoon, man. Every movie should be around this time. Yeah, get in and get out. It's yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you say we talk about some fun facts? You got some fun facts for Frankenstein? Yeah, I got a bunch, actually. I'm sure you have awesome. a lot of the same. But this cool. movie is an adaptation of the 1927 play, Frankenstein, mm -hmm. which was in turn based on the 1818 novel, Frankenstein, also called the modern Prometheus. 1818, to, man. <laughs> yeah, just to add on to that, do you know how old Mary Shelley was when she wrote Frankenstein? No idea. No idea. Not 19 years old. Are you serious? 19. Man. Yeah. Unbelievable. That is amazing. Yeah. Great writing for one. And just to, just to have that imagination, you know? Oh, to scare the pants off of, you know, a, a whole group of men, which is where she, I, I think, originally got the idea. But that, you know, is for another day. What else you got for fun <laughs> facts? Um, Henry Frankenstein. In the novel, is actually called Victor Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fun fact here, this movie made on a budget of $262,000. Wow. Wow. But made over $12 million. 
And obviously, you take in uh, inflation. No it's, you know, kidding, right? This is that would have been crazy. We're talking about here. Yeah, 1931. Nuts. Craziness. Um, so there was a lot cut from this movie in different portions of the world. Um, this movie was completely banned in Northern Ireland, Quebec, of course, <laughs> Sweden, Italy, and Czechoslovakia at the time. Um, and the state of Kansas also yeah. only allowed uh, an extremely edited version of the film, which is like apparently half the runtime. Yeah, it was apparently uh, <laughs> apparently banned in Kansas on the grounds that it exhibited cruelty and tended to debase morals. <laughs> I will take their word for it. Thanks a lot, Kansas. There's also a scene that was cut. So the scene where the monster throws that little girl into the lake. Yeah. Okay, so that was originally completely cut from the film. Yeah. Because it was too graphic. And then in the 1980s, that footage was rediscovered, restored, and then added to like the modern copies of it you can get today. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So that's I thought that that was a pretty cool fun fact as well. My last fun fact on this movie is there's a current reboot in the works. Guess who is behind the wheel? Oh, I wonder. <laughs> James Wan with Atomic Monster and Jason Blum with Blumhouse. <laughs> I was reading up about this. Um <laughs> And there's maybe a, a couple different Frankenstein's that are kicking off because there's one that's, I believe, being done by Netflix as, as well right now with uh, like a movie Chris, or a series, a movie with Christoph oh, yeah. Waltz what? Uh, was he, just he's, announced. He's great. He's yeah, he's great. wonderful. He's wonderful. Yeah. Um, wow. Blumhouse is just has their <laughs> their finger in every pie. Hey? <laughs> they do. They do. What else you got? Anything? That's it. That, that that's my last uh, fun fact for. I got uh, a couple here. Frankenstein. Uh, apparently, there is a long lost twenty minute test reel starring Bella Lugosi, who played Dracula in nineteen thirty one as the monster. I read that he. I read he really, really wanted to be. He really wanted that role. Yeah, I I don't know maybe why he didn't get it. I'm assuming because they were filming Dracula at the same time, they didn't maybe want to give him all the monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was filmed on the set of Dracula, which I thought was really, really cool. He ended up playing Dracula. Yes, he did. Yeah. I'm not sure in which movie, but he ended up playing Dracula. Or uh, not was... Dracula, sorry, Frankenstein. Oh, okay. Yeah, he ended up, like he was Dracula, but he did end up getting the role of Frankenstein in Frankenstein's one of the later monster. sequels. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Um, I thought, uh, I read another one here, Boris Karloff, 44 years old, when Frankenstein was released. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> uh, it took, apparently, it took him four hours, or it took four hours for Boris Karloff to get into makeup. And his costume weighed 48 pounds. <laughs> I'm not surprised by the weight, but the, I'm kind of surprised by the time of the yeah, name. I thought it was going to be longer than that, though. Yeah. To be honest. Um, I also thought it was cool that each one of his shoes weighed 13 pounds, <laughs> which is insane. I, I he should he should have won a special award for just going up and down those stairs, <laughs> which were so narrow. And it's I like, know, how, right? how did he make it down those stairs without breaking his neck? <laughs> and then finally, this is my my final fun fact. I'm of course, as you know, a huge comedy fan. Yes, obviously. So I read that the gadgets and the machines in Dr. Henry Frankenstein's lab were also used in the legendary 1974 Mel Brooks classic, Young Frankenstein. Okay. Um, Ken Strickfaden uh, built all of the machines and gadgets, but was never credited for Frankenstein in 1931. But Mel Brooks made sure to credit him for Young Frankenstein in 1974. Apparently, they were just like sitting in storage. But when Mel Brooks found out that they were still available, he jumped all over. Man, that's why. Did you know another fun fact, by the way? One, just one, but one of those Tesla coils in that collection there is from Tesla himself. Nikola no Tesla. way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, way cool. I did not yeah. know that. That's really cool. Yeah, 100%. I read that when I was like doing my research, but I didn't write it down. But that just made me remember it. So cool. <laughs> um, let's dive in to the fun folks 
fine folks and fun folks <laughs> who helped make this classic. First of all, directed by James Whale, also directed 1933's The Invisible Man, 1935's The Bre uh, Bride of Frankenstein, 1939's The Man in the Iron Mask, and in an uncredited director's role for the 1930s Howard Hughes classic Hell's Angels. So there's two big universal monster movies right there with The Invisible Man and The Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. Pretty cool. But also it's a reoccurring thing that you'll see amongst these movies is a lot of people wrote or starred or directed a lot of the universal monster movies. Um, I believe back a lot in of the same actors too. Man. Yeah. I believe back in the 1930s, it was still very much the studio system yeah. where you would sign like an eight picture deal with the studio and then you would be in a bunch of movies for that specific studio. So that's yeah, why yeah. I see that. Um, this one written by John L. Balderton also wrote the screenplay for 1931's Dracula, 1932's The Mummy, 1935's Mystery of Edwin Drood, 1935's The Bride of Frankenstein, and 1936's The Last of the Mohicans. Also written by Peggy Webling who wrote the novel uh, in 1918, Boundary House. And then, of course, uh, based on the, the book by Mary Shelley, uh, in 19, uh, according to IMDb, in the summer of 1816, Lord Byron challenged four friends staying at the Villa Doadati to write a ghost story. A few okay. nights later, Mary had a vision based on a dream 15 months earlier of her daughter, who had lived 11 days being brought to life by the warmth of a fire. With the encouragement of her husband, she produced a novel 11 months later. Frankenstein was published 1818. Bro, okay, it's 2023. <clears throat> yeah. And we are talking about her book right now. That is wild. Unbelievable. Lasting impression. And it is as cool today and as scary as today as mm -hmm. it was back then. I love oh. this. I love it. Uh, this one starring Colin Clive as Dr. Henry Frankenstein also starred as Bruce, uh, Bruce Vale in 1937's History is Made at Night, Stephen Orlack in 1935's Mad Love, and of course as Henry Frankenstein in 1935's The Bride of Frankenstein. Also starring Mae Clark as Elizabeth. She starred in 1931's Waterloo Bridge, 1931's The Public Enemy, 1945's Kitty and 1949's King of the Rocket Men. And then, of course, starring Boris Karloff as the creature, starred in 1932's The Mummy as Imohemet, uh, Imhotep, uh, Imhotep. There you go. Uh, 1934's The Black Cat, 1932's Scarface, Dr. Fu Manchu in 1932's The Mask of Fu Manchu. <laughs> Fu Manchu. <laughs> and maybe most famously, as the narrator and the voice of the Grinch in the 1966 holiday classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I absolutely love that. I love that so much. <laughs> Ditto. I also love, love, love How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Synopsis <laughs> for 1931's Frankenstein, courtesy of our dear friends at IMDb. Dr. Henry Frankenstein is obsessed with assembling a living being from parts of several exhumed corpses. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't explain the, it doesn't talk about, not explain, but talk about the last half of the movie. But yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. It's maybe not as uh, exciting as the movie is. Um <laughs> There you have it. It gives you Thanks. the just it gives you the just picture of it. Yeah, <laughs> the Cliff Notes version. Thanks, IMDB. <laughs> um, this leads to uh, one of our favorite segments, Kill Count. Kill Count. The time of the show we count. The kills. Blairsky, do we have a kill count for 1931's Frankenstein? Man, we got a total kill count of four. That's Whoa. including the monster. The monster himself killed three. Okay. Yeah. Wowza. 1930s, man. 1930s. 1931. That is that is a bloodbath. Man, I was watching this movie with Rachel. I was like, man, this movie's from 1931, and we got ourselves a kill count. I said that. Yeah, like, we got the, ourselves I, a kill count. I said that at the first kill. <laughs> I was like, Excellent. oh, yeah. 
Um, this leads to one of our favorite segments, likes and dislikes, the portion of the show where we talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, and everything in between. Blairsky, you want to kick this one off? I'm going to kick this one off with the opening warning segment, (laughs) which is an inspiration for Marge Simpson's warning segment at the beginning of the Simpsons trio of horror. Yeah. I also just watched a, uh, a Mickey Mouse cartoon today okay. that also uh, had their own little uh, intro that was based off of Frankenstein as well. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. It's so good. It's so good. And it gets you. It got me invested right away. I have never seen. I said this last episode with Creature of the Black Lagoon. I haven't seen any of these movies before. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't know what I'm going into, to be honest, especially with movies this old. Yeah. But that intro got me invested right away. This is arguably one of my favorite universal horror monster movies, if not one of my favorite horror movies. And I that intro is so good. I love the idea of any kind of warning given to the audience and also to unsettle you, to make you nervous mm-hmm. before anything scary has has happened or started yeah that is a that is a treat that is a skill and it happens just like that right off the bat you get a little bit nervous oh am i supposed to be right in the mood man yeah am i supposed to be worried about watching this like oh what am i getting myself (laughs) into i love that intro it's great like yeah obviously watching it now it's it's been done so many times but 1931 man you're going into theaters and seeing that oh yeah Brilliant. Um, I love how that intro goes straight into the opening um, uh, title cards um, and they list the players in the movie. And I just really love how the title card for the creature, instead of Boris Karloff's name, it's it's just just a a question question mark. mark. And like a big question mark. Yeah. (laughs) It's just a giant question mark. They make up for it in the end credits. They have Mm -hmm. his name as the creature. Mm -hmm. But I, again... That's just another kind of like air of mystery. It makes you a little bit more anxious, a little bit more scared because it's, well, who plays the creature? Who is the creature? Is the creature real even, right? Is the creature real? Exactly. It's so smart and it's so simple and it seems so goofy nowadays, but (laughs) what a great idea. I love that. I think it was awesome. I think it was so awesome. Uh, I want to talk quickly about the monster. Yes, please. I want to talk about how awesome he looks. Kate, okay, did you have you seen footage of the play? The monster from the play. So I've seen uh, I've actually seen the full play with um Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, as, but that would have been a recent one though, right? That was a recent one. Yeah, I haven't seen photos from like the earlier Okay, yeah. so yeah, I'm talking the 1927 play that this movie was based from. Okay. So the monster in the play looks completely different. Yeah. Completely different from the monster in this movie. Now, obviously, this is all based from the book. So the play was the first attempt, right, yeah. at creating that monster visually. And then I just I just can't say enough about what this movie did to the look of the monster. And that's the thing, because apparently even in the book, that is not what the monster is supposed to look like at all. I'm wondering but, if maybe the play, that 1927 play, is more like it. I, I don't it's even... very hard to explain it um, just verbally without uh, seeing it. I mean, but when it is people... completely opposite of the monster you get in the movie. And that's the thing. When you say Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster to yeah. anyone... The image that they get is Boris Karloff or Mm -hmm. some kind of cartoon exaggerated version of Boris Karloff's creature, where it's kind of the the big forehead, the bolts coming out of the neck, Mm -hmm. this, you know, the scars stitched together, the kind of grayish flat flat top, the hairdo, the suit jacket, kind of the big shoulders. That is the image that we get when we think. Frankenstein. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, and I imagine this movie. And I imagine that that's the image that most everyone gets when they think Frankenstein. Yeah, you know. Well, and as you keep saying Frankenstein, so many people think, yeah, that is Frankenstein. 
yeah. but that is Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, I, I I read something where it's like, well, it's an it's an understanding that Frankenstein's monster would take his surname. Okay, fair so enough. In turn, would also be Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Fair enough. Which fair enough. again, I think when again, like the creature, when people say Frankenstein, we don't think of dr henry or dr victor frankenstein no, no you think of the we monster. think of the creature of yeah. course of course <laughs> what else did you like about this one um uh, let's read my notes here uh, well uh, this isn't even a like or dislike i just wanted to say that i always thought that my whole life growing up i always thought the character fritz was named igor igor and i think he is in I, the, the, he he becomes Igor, I think, in Bride the of Frankenstein. Third one. No, not Bride. The Bride. son of Frankenstein. Perhaps. So I, I read that in Bride <laughs> of Frankenstein is the same actor that plays okay. Fritz. Yeah, he plays another character, but it's not Igor. I cannot remember the name. But okay. he also meets his demise to you know the monster. Yeah, and then I think in the third one, I don't even remember which one. Maybe Son of Frankenstein. I think it is Son of Frankenstein. Yeah. Okay, I think that is when he becomes Igor. He's a goofy character, and I love that first scene where they're where they're grave robbing a corpse, um, and even the next scene when they're you know they're stealing a corpse that's hanging from a tree, and Fritz is doing all the dirty work for the most part. You know why he's doing all the dirty work in this movie? But yeah. The way he was gay, I Frankenstein's monster to me kind of reminded me of Jigsaw, where I I didn't know whether to feel sorry for him or you know he gets what he deserves. Like, so you know I, mean? I the way I think about it for Frankenstein's creature, he didn't ask for any of this. Hmm. You know, he didn't ask to be put back into you know and reanimated he did he yeah. didn't ask for any of this and i yeah. feel like he's just defending himself mm -hmm. so he's almost immediately chained up he's oh and, and that's what i was going to get at how yeah Fritz threatened with threatened with fire whipping him and shit whipping him so it's like i feel like frankenstein's monster is defending himself for most of the movie <laughs> right. even in the scene with the little girl that you had mentioned um this scene with the creature and little girl uh, although the ending is disastrous it's yeah. a very sweet scene um the little girl sees nothing wrong with the creature's appearance whatsoever no. she just wants she's the, him to play with her she's the only one who isn't immediately shocked and alarmed at this grotesque creature you know yeah. it's a very yeah. sweet scene and then he completely by accident you know kills this poor girl Apparently, mm -hmm. during the filming of that scene, too, everyone was really nervous that that little girl was going to react. Um, she was going to freak out when she saw Boris Karloff in costume. Oh, it's because she didn't show they didn't show her beforehand. No, not at all. Oh, okay. And apparently she reacted the complete opposite. She reacted just like she would in the movie. She was really sweet. She went up and took him by the hand and she asked if they could drive to set together what that's yeah, awesome man. which that's is so really, awesome. really sweet and then boris karloff was like totally smitten and yeah of course and right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> i want to talk about the set decoration um yeah, yeah and, and, and and just the set itself <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is absolutely brilliant it's beautiful it's gothic it is so distorted uh, the painted walls make the rooms look massive i was just about to say i, I loved the painted walls man I, I Carly, my wife, joined me for maybe 10 minutes of the movie and she walked in. I, it was in the hallway scene of of Dr. Frankenstein's lab. And she's a, you know, a costume designer. She's a set designer as well. And immediately she said, this set is beautiful. Like she just loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just loved everything about it. The staircase was just fantastic. It was uh, Again, how Boris Karloff made it down those stairs without breaking his neck is mind blowing. <laughs> Thirteen pound shoes each foot. Yeah, Jesus and then Christ. the lab itself was so so. Yeah, good. it was. Yeah, it was. Um, and then the even set the village, man, even the village. Yeah, the village yeah. was awesome. 
beautiful that end scene with the windmill as well what a beautiful set that is completely engulfed in flames in like a matter of a couple seconds i love it yeah um i love the use of shadows in this movie too it seems like the shadows are just following the characters everywhere it is so Mm -hmm. cool it is so dark i love it um what else do you like about this one (sighs) Man, I can I can just keep going. I, I loved I love this movie. Yeah, <laughs> the um, first time I, I've ever seen it, man, and I didn't know what to expect, and I loved it. I see why it's such a classic, man. It is a horror, just an iconic movie. It's a staple. It's a, it's staple. a staple. The I, whole uh, scene, the creation scene, I'll call it. Oh, it's iconic. Scene, man. Yeah, I, I just, just love. It. You know, with all the machines whirling and then the the sound of the thunder, which I think is like the first time that stock sound was ever used. Okay. That thunder cracking, which is so iconic. It's so great. I love it. I love this movie so much. I love the first glimpse that we get of Frankenstein's creature. Like Boris when, Karloff. He's, when he's awake or when he's still in the... Uh, no, he when he's awake. Down. So basically Boris Karloff enters the room with his back to the camera mm-hmm. and then slowly turns around and you just get this close-up of this, of this face and you get the full effect of this tremendous makeup yeah. that, yeah, blows our mind that it was done in four hours because it is fantastic. That's, I was thinking, like, I would literally be thinking that's an eight-hour job. Yeah, it's unreal. Um, the only thing I wasn't crazy about in this movie, I, I felt like it ended and it was kind of my same reaction in Creature from the Black Lagoon. I feel like it ends kind of abruptly. It does. Um, but I forgive it. This movie is just it's so <laughs> great. I, I, I'm going through my list here. I love the use of mannequins. There's a scene at the end. Dr. Frankenstein is hurled by the creature over the railing of the yeah, window, yeah. and it's clearly a mannequin. And I love it. I just <laughs> Where he love like that. sits on the actual like fan of the windmill for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I just I I love the I love filmmaking, like early filmmaking. Mm-hmm. I just I love what they did to make things work. It was so cool. I love that it was clearly shot on a soundstage. You know, I couldn't help also but think like what the size of the camera is. Massive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just the biggest camera. Um, we could honestly go on for days and days for likes and dislikes, but what do you say we move along to our next segment, which is lessons we learned from watching 1931's Frankenstein. Lessons we learned from watching. Insert title of movie here. The segment of the show where we talk about the valuable life lessons we learned from watching said movie. Blairsky, did you learn a single thing from 1931's Frankenstein? Uh, A couple things. Do not throw little girls into lakes. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) And uh, last but not least, uh, just don't mess with the dead. Don't dig up dead bodies. Do not cut them up and put them all together and try to recreate another body with uh, Z pieces. Just don't do Uh, that. Yeah, absolutely. I I basically (laughs) said, don't try to play God. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right. (laughs) I also have don't play with electricity. Yeah, don't. (laughs) <laughs> and then finally, make sure if you were still in a human brain that you get a normal brain, not <laughs> one that is clearly labeled abnormal brain. See, I, I missed that because when I saw the glass jar, I just saw the normal part of it. Oh, yeah. There's the other one that said abnormal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. This leads to one of our favorite segments, Line of the Night. 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 The segment of the show where we discuss our favorite lines from the movie. They might give us chills. They might give us the giggles. All we know is that they are our favorites, Blairski. Do you have any lines for this one? So I've got one written down, but I just want to say the character of Baron 
Frankenstein yeah. had many great lines. <laughs> yeah, he was the life of the party. <laughs> he was awesome. Yeah. None of his I've written down, but he was great. Yeah. Um, the one I did write down, which is the, of course, classic. It's alive. It's alive. In the name of God, now I know what it's like to be a god. Wow. That apparently is another uh, line that was cut from um, the movie. Cut from the movie or uh, mm -hmm. um, reworded for the yeah. longest time. Um, it was blasphemous. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's alive. It's alive. So good. Uh, I've got a couple lines here. Uh, a couple from the intro. Okay. Uh, first, I have it's one of the strangest tales ever told. Yep. <laughs> and then I true. also have from the intro. <laughs> I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even mm -hmm. horrify you. Mm -hmm. yep. Love that. Uh, got one from Dr. Frankenstein after digging up the grave uh, right early on in the morning. He pats the casket and says, he's just resting, waiting for a new life to come. Love that. Mm -hmm. I've got a line here from Elizabeth. I love this line when she says, he said he was on the verge of a discovery so terrific that he doubted his own sanity. Yeah. What a great line. I yeah, love it. And, and in those moments when he's creating his monster, he's clearly insane. Yeah. He is a man that is so obsessed mm -hmm. that, yeah, he's, he's let it control his life, his mind, his everything. Uh, finally, I have Dr. Waldman. He says, you have created a monster and it will destroy you. I love that. Yeah. Love it. This leads to our favorite segment of the show, Celebrity Lookalike Time. Celebrity Lookalike Time. The time of the show where we take a look at the cast and discuss their celebrity doppelgangers. Spoiler alert, it usually comes down to the character's hairstyle, Blairsky. Do you have any celebrity lookalikes for 1931's Frankenstein? <laughs> Man, I'm always worried with these older movies, you yeah. know? Like, I'm always worried, especially in black and white. But I yeah. do have two. I do have two. Um, Henry Frankenstein reminded me of Crispin Glover as George McFly in Back to the Future. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> and uh, my last one is if, Pharaoh, if Baron Frankenstein shaved yeah. his mustache off, you'd have a Winston Churchill. Okay. <laughs> the bulldog himself. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. I've got uh, one character, but two lookalikes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Henry Frankenstein reminded me a lot of Ty Burrell, a.k.a. Phil Dunphy from ABC's hit sitcom Modern Family. Mm -hmm. um, he also reminded me a bit of Johnny Knoxville. Okay. okay. I think it's honestly, it's the eyebrows and it's the jawline. Okay, I, I definitely see the first one. I'll have yeah. to kind of put a two and two side by side with Johnny Knoxville. That's Look at the cool. headshots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this leads to our final rating for 1931's Frankenstein Blairsky out of five perfect wedding days ruined by pitchforks, fire, accordions, and an angry mob dressed in lederhosen. What do you give Frankenstein? I loved Frankenstein, I am giving it five perfect wedding days ruined by pitchforks, fire accordions, and an angry mob dressed in Lederhausen out of five. That makes me so incredibly happy. <laughs> like I said, this is one of my favorite Universal Monster movies, um, which is why I am also giving it five perfect wedding days ruined by pitchforks, fire accordions and an angry mob dressed in lederhosen out of five this is a, a, a perfect movie it is so good everyone it's, should watch it, this man it's obviously stood up to this day for a reason right yeah like frankenstein is one of the most infamous horror creatures ever Frankenstein's yeah. monster i'll say but i think yeah. arguably i mean even when you think of black and white movies Mm -hmm. and you, you obviously you think a lot of Chaplin, but you think Universal monster movies, and specifically, I think out of all of them, you think of Frankenstein. A hundred percent, man. The character, all of the characters in this movie are fantastic. 
The story is frightening. It's tragic. It is sad. It's depressing. It is excellent. I yeah. love this movie. <laughs> it's everything, man. It's everything. It's so good. I'm so it's glad so we watched good. this one. Yeah. I, I watched it with Rachel as well. It was both her first watch. Yeah. And she felt the exact same as me. Oh, awesome. I'm so happy. That's, I asked that's her. Great. I, I asked her. I was like, what would you rate it out of five? She's like, well, as a nowadays movie, I would rate it a three and a half out of five. Yeah. And I said, fair enough. And I said, what about if you watched it in 1931? And she said, five out of five. Five out of five. Even yeah. three and a half out of five, you know, right? for a movie that's nearly a hundred years old. That's, that's pretty insane, good. man. That's yeah. Insane. Yeah. I love it. This was a great one to talk about. One that I've been wanting to talk about for a minute. I'm glad we did it. And I'm excited to watch the next one. I am too, man. I am too. It's uh, it's been a fun month so far. I love October. So far, obviously, so and, good. Yeah. And this has been a just a good. A it's good, been different. Yeah, it's been different. It's just been good because, like, I don't know. It's it's enlightening my October. You know, I'm seeing all these Universal monster movies that that are so important uh, to horror itself and so many people, and I'm seeing them for the first time in the best month of the year, and I love it. They're having, they're having a so, good time. <laughs> they're just so important. They're so influential in the world of horror yeah. that um, every, every horror fan should watch these, these movies should study these movies yeah. um, and should appreciate them for different reasons. These movies are fantastic, but enough of that uh, from your reviews at scare with Jess and Blair. I'm Jess. I'm Blair. Remember to stay scary. And eat every sandwich. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Review Set Scare. Make sure you check out our link tree at linktree slash review set scare. That's L I N K T R dot E E slash review set scare, which has links to our Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, Twitch, and many other things. If you'd like to email us, you can reach us at review set scare at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and remember to stay scary and eat every sandwich. A proud member of Pod Nation TV.